Okay, cool. So, what's the name of the piece? Is it recording? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this piece is called The Cycle of Thought and Creation, and it's a concept that stemmed from way back in high school. I did a, a colored pencil drawing, which is how I used to do my art back then, and um, I wanted to kind of redo it and be, have it be a part of the series I'm doing called Imagine That, which represents the imagination. And in most of the piece, pieces, the head of the figure is cut open to represent the mind, the open mind and the imagination. But in this one, I really wanted to create a creature and um, even furthermore, a creator. Um, and those two words share a lot of the same, same letters, so I thought that was kind of interesting. So I didn't really want it to be necessarily a person. I didn't want it to be necessarily a male or a female. So I just kind of started in the center here with, with the sun. And this was pretty much done almost all live. So I just kind of went for it. There was no sketching or any of that. And the, uh, the, the beard here is the sun and that kind of represents the male because one, males have beards and two, in like the yin yang in Chinese philosophy, um, the sun is, is the male and the moon is the female. So the day is male and the night and the cool and the wet is, is the female. So up here is why I put the moon to kind of balance it up. And uh, this is also a very common symbol in like Hindu and Muslim traditions and a lot of people have taken their own representations of it, especially right there on the third eye. But to me, that was just kind of a balancing factor of the masculine and the feminine. And uh, I kind of didn't even want the figure to look exactly the same, so that's why I put this eye bigger. And then one of my students who comes to my house every week, one of my dance students, she said, oh, is this part of the Toltec tradition? Because in their art, they show the left eye as being bigger if the, the creature, or if the person, in that case, is, is a dreamer or is a visionary. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. So that was kind of interesting. So there's definitely a lot of subconscious uh, representation going on in this piece. And so the reason, the main reason it's called the cycle of thought and creation is because this here represents the brain and the little cortex kind of unravels into an umbilical cord and this obvious is obviously representing life. So the idea that our thoughts give life and what more obvious than to have an embryo and to have an unborn child in it and which is I think why it went to Kiwi, who just had a baby in Bon Bon, and um, it's definitely, and it was being created at the time when the baby was in the womb, and then it kind of keeps going in this like cycle, to me, it's a cycle, and it comes into the paint palette, and so this is representing kind of where I'm at in, in my creative life and in the, the babies that I'm producing. <laughs> more prolifically than a child and so here is is the the palette which is just symbolizing the creator and um, I almost called it the creatrix with a T-R-I-X like kind of like a trick because this has been through a lot of crazy stories like when I was live painting it got knocked over and I had to like save it and my turpentine broke on the floor and um, it was the first time that ever happened and I was just like falling in love with this piece and and at the same time there was all these little trickeries going on around me and um, to me that kind of at the same time represents like the, the monkey energy and that playful energy and I was kind of going for a lion and it turned out to be kind of a monkey lion is what I'm hearing and what I feel from it too so it's kind of like a, a Hanuman Hindu monkey lion and uh, yeah monkey and then a lion, which represents like that courage. And if you're if you're going to be a creator, there's definitely a lot of courage that goes into um, devoting yourself to an idea of, or a child or a painting. So that's why it's called the cycle of thought and creation. And it's it's um, like all my artwork. There to me, there's a flow to it. So there's a feng shui, and um, 
everything kind of moves. So even when, when I was thinking about coming off here, it doesn't just stop. I imagine where it's going off the canvas and back onto the canvas, how this paint is dripping and how those colors match the child. So um, to me, it's just that, that cycle and um, shows the power of our thoughts to create amazing things. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What are, what do you think of what uh, what was new about this painting for you when you were painting some of it with your progression with your painting? Um Well, one thing that was new was that I I wanted to to do eyes, but I didn't want to make it like a goddess or a god or, you know, so I really and I didn't want to necessarily make it an animal either. So that and but I didn't know what I wanted to make it. So a lot of times, even though I do visionary artwork, um, and it's you know kind of psychedelic, I kind of know what I want in my mind. And this one, I just I really went for it. I wanted to loosen up, and I just went straight from the from the title, you know, the cycle of thought and creation. Period. And let's see what happens. Um, and I like I said, I just started with the sun. So this one definitely came out like even more organically than most of mine and I and it's reminding me to kind of like let that happen because a lot of people like it I like it it's one of my favorites and um, it's good to kind of z zero in on some and know what you want but like at the same time this was teaching me like there's way more to it than than what I could even imagine that I'm tra like portraying you know and if I just doing it live and having such chaotic environments like this one went through like the weirdest like situations not always like the funnest times either and <laughs> um but i just was so sucked into it and didn't you know i cared but i just kind of kept going so that's a little bit different i also like use my old pal my actual literal palettes where i had clunk clunky paint and instead of trying to like mix a bunch of this i mean obviously a bunch of it is i was already wet and it matches the painting but I took like huge chunks of it and just like put it where it would be so it really felt like a palette because my palettes get pretty thick. So that, that's a little bit different about this one too. It's also a little bit bigger than the size I was working in. Um, and now I really like this size. So I'm, I'm, it's kind of one of the first of the, it's 30 by 40, which is just a really nice size, not too big, not too small. So, yeah, lots of, <laughs> each painting feels like there's a first for something, so.